This is called exocytosis. It's a very simple thing, but it is absolutely critical for carbohydrate metabolism. And vitamin D plays an extraordinary role in making sure it does its job properly. Vitamin D leads to calcium absorption. Calcium absorption leads to proper glucose function, but everyone is so busy talking about vitamin D playing a role in osteoporosis that they forget about its role in metabolic function, which if you ask me, metabolic function is like the hallmark of everything. Like it's where everything kind of starts, at least that's my opinion. And vitamin D is so important. And as we get older, we end up synthesizing less vitamin D in general, but just as a population, about 41% of the population is deficient in vitamin D to begin with. Probably because we're not outside as much and we're not eating vitamin D rich foods and whatever. But I'm gonna show you and explain to you why vitamin D supplementation, why having sufficient amounts of vitamin D, even through diet and sunlight, are going to be so important for making sure you process carbs properly. I put a link down below for Thrive Market. I know this is a relevant pitch for them, but at the same time, it makes sense. There's a 30% off discount link down below. Thrive Market is an online membership-based grocery store, and it literally is their mission to make healthier food more available for people in areas that cannot get healthier food. They really wanted to make sustainability a real thing and be able to get real good, unprocessed, and even healthier processed food options into people's hands. So that link down below is a 30% off discount link for whatever you choose. You can fill up your grocery cart using that link, 30% off plus a free $60 gift. So 30% off whether you choose some beet chips or whether you choose Siete tortilla chips instead of regular corn chips, or if you want jerky snacks or this or that. And a lot of the times it's gonna be much, much cheaper than you would find at many grocery stores. So that link is down below. It's in the top line of the description underneath this video. And again, 30% off and a free $60 gift. So here's what it looks like. Sort of taking a trip down carbohydrate ingestion lane. You consume that strudel. Who likes strudel? I don't know. You consume that strudel and the glucose comes in your system, okay, and then that glucose is going to bind and it's going to uh, trigger the pancreatic beta cell, which is a cell that's in your pancreas that secretes insulin, okay? It's gonna trigger that beta cell to go through what is called depolarization. Long story short, calcium likes a depolarized cell. So remember how vitamin D plays a role in the absorption of calcium? Well, that calcium that got absorbed as a result of the vitamin D therefore goes into the pancreatic beta cell. And if we weren't absorbing calcium from vitamin D, there wouldn't be calcium to go into that pancreatic beta cell. Okay, when it goes into the pancreatic beta cell, it triggers a fusion of the outer membrane towards like kind of the inside of the cell. This whole process is the exocytosis piece that I opened this video with. So what ends up happening is once exocytosis happens, then insulin can flood out of the pancreatic beta cell and it can allow the rest of our cells to take up glucose. Without insulin, we end up hyperglycemic. We end up having high levels of circulating glucose. We end up with insulin resistance. So we can end up with central adiposity. We end up with you know, that apple shape that we don't want, right? Visceral fat, all this stuff. It could be a very big problem. So where does vitamin D like directly come in? Well, it's interesting because vitamin D has this indirect effect on allowing us to use more glucose, but it also seems to have a direct effect. So take a look at this interesting study. There's a study that was published in the journal Steroids, which kind of sounds weird, but vitamin D is technically a hormone, so it falls into this category. Okay, they directly stimulated vitamin D receptors on the liver, and when those vitamin D receptors were triggered, were just activated, it triggered better glucose uptake. Okay, so simply activating the vitamin D receptor on the liver improved how we took up glucose making us potentially less insulin resistant, improving our insulin sensitivity, and absorbing more glucose. And that was without vitamin D, that was just stimulating the receptor. So if vitamin D is there naturally, and it's able to stimulate that receptor, we can potentially get away, I don't wanna say get away with eating more carbs, but at least have them go to the right place and not just circulate and trigger these negative issues. But there's some interesting data that was published in a meta-analysis that looked at a whole lot of people that is even more interesting. So this study was published in the journal Medicine, and it was a meta-analysis took a look at 747 participants. And they found that vitamin D supplementation improved insulin concentration, decreased insulin resistance, and improved overall glucose uptake, and decreased HbA1c, which is sort of a, a lagging indicator of your blood glucose. So just by bringing in vitamin D supplementation, they found that people ended up just responding better. And this was a large study, 740. It's very reputable and very credible when you have a study of this size. They also found there was an inverse correlation between higher levels of vitamin D and decreased central adiposity. 
Okay, and lower levels of vitamin D and increased central adiposity. That means like visceral fat, that means the fat that we're storing around the midsection not necessarily evenly distributed. And there are a lot of indicators that show that central adiposity has to do with insulin resistance. So we have all these different links that are connected here. Okay, vitamin D, less insulin sensitivity, higher levels of blood glucose, therefore central adiposity. So does just adding vitamin D into the mix end up fixing everything? Well, I don't say it's gonna fix everything, but if you are deficient in vitamin D, you may want to look at ways to get vitamin D in. Now, I don't care if that's coming from a supplement form or if it's coming from additional sunlight or if it's coming from fatty fish and it's coming from like sardines and vitamin D rich foods or good quality eggs, things like that. Do whatever you can to make a concerted effort to add more vitamin D. Now, I will also say that vitamin D in terms of food form will probably work better if you consume it in the morning because vitamin D is a, something that you absorb from the sun and you would typically be getting that during the day. Now, if you're taking it in a synthetic form, in like a supplement, it doesn't matter, the chronobiology doesn't matter as much. It doesn't necessarily matter what time of day you take it. You could take it later in the day. But when it comes down to the food, which is going to be more bioavailable, it's more bioavailable vitamin D, bioavailable retinol A, all this that's gonna absorb quicker, you want those kinds of foods in the morning, okay? So uh, eggs with lox, or eggs with, I don't know, some salmon, some sardines, things like that, that are vitamin D rich foods, have those stacked in the morning because then it's gonna align with your circadian clock genes registering that, oh, this is daylight hours in the morning getting vitamin D, allowing it to synthesize and do its job. Now, if you're trying to get more sun exposure, keep in mind that if you're in your 20s and 30s, 20 or 30 minutes of good sun exposure can do the trick. But as you get older, you have less 7-dehydrocholesterol, which actually converts the sunlight into the usable D3. So after age 40, you need to start spending like 10 extra minutes in the sun per day. But then you run into a different set of problems with you know, being concerned with sun exposure and all this. So getting it from the diet is probably your best way to go in combination with getting it from the sun. The bottom line is, Yes, it can help you with glucose utilization. If you're doing a lower carb protocol and you wanna make sure that you're not gonna feel like garbage if you do have a couple carbs or two, making sure your vitamin D levels are in check could be a big player. As always, I'm not a doctor, I'm just some dude on the internet, so take it for what it's worth, but I'll see you tomorrow.